Hello and welcome to Nissan Stadium here in Nashville, Tennessee, where the Vols just took down Virginia 49 to 13. I'm Ryan Sylvia. This is Noah Taylor. We're with VolReport.com on the Rivals Network. And let's talk about win number one of the 2023 football season for Tennessee. A bit surprisingly, it was the defense that took all yeah. of the headlines, holding Virginia to just 13 points, to just over 200 yards. If you look at those first half stats, negative rushing yards, net gain for Virginia which really showed the dominance of Tennessee's defense, which was something that you expected them to take a step in the right direction. And it's not an elite Virginia offense by any means, but still a little bit surprising how effective they were, yeah. especially in kind of short field position moments after kind of special team blunders. But was there anyone that stood out to you on the defensive end, Noah? Yeah, I'm going to go with James Pierce is a big one, and Tyler Barron as well. I mean, two guys that, that both had a pair of sacks in this game got to the quarterback, had some QB hurries as well. And you mentioned it. We talked a lot in the last couple of weeks about the depth, what this team was going to look like defensively. You expect improvement with the with the experience they returned. And, and man, they, they really showed it. And, yeah. and we thought this would be a good game for that. Again, it, it's a Virginia def offense that was breaking in a new quarterback, a guy who has never played at this level, and Tony Musket coming from the FCS ranks. And it just kind of the perfect game for that defense to come in. I think up front those guys are really good. That was a strength for Tennessee last year on this defense, mm -hmm. get, uh, stopping the run. But they talked about wanting to get to the quarterback better this year, and you could not have asked for a better start with the way they played. I mean, they were a dominant force throughout, but really set the tone early in a game where the offense kind of was sluggish to start. Yeah, two guys on the defensive end. One, Tyler Barron, you expect him to do well uh, kind of in his senior season, taking that leadership role, lived up to expectations. But I don't think a lot of people had James Pierce making this big of an impact this early in the season as a sophomore. There was a lot of high expectations for him. They, they knew what he was capable of, but this was definitely a coming out party for Pierce as he looks to build on the season. Let's flip it over to the offensive side of the ball. It was a little bit slow coming out the gate for Tennessee. Uh, obviously scored on the first drive of the game on a Joe Milton to Dylan Sampson kind of screen pass. A lot of protection in the pocket for him on that play. But then it kind of stalled out a little bit, and it took a while for Tennessee to really gain their footing. And we have truly only saw it in the third quarter when they started to get the ball rolling, uh, kind of as we're used to seeing from Tennessee's yeah. offense, uh, as Joe Milton led them immediately down the field for a touchdown and, and kind of put this game completely out of reach. But on the offensive side of the ball, who stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, it's an offense that we know loves to throw the ball. We saw that a ton last year. And they returned a lot of experience at wide receiver, but it was the run game that, that carried them downfield on that first drive, mm -hmm. particularly Jalen Wright. Obviously, Dylan Sampson caps that drive with a pass. He had a big day both ways, both catching passes out of the backfield mm -hmm. and running the ball. But Jalen Wright, I mean, he, he set the tone on that first drive. I think <laughs> the first four or five plays went to him. He essentially carried them downfield. Really impressive performance from him. And it, we talked about it during the game. It was on this field in 2021. That end zone yep. right down there, he gets stopped. Shouldn't have been whistled dead, but it was on what should have been the game-winning touchdown in overtime against Purdue. It's whistled dead. They lose that game. He's kind of, you know, a good example of where this program has been, where it is now, and you could not have picked a better player to have a big game here today. Yep. Didn't see the end zone, but was a huge piece for this offense today on a day where they really needed it. And we came into this game, we talked a lot about, we thought the run game was going to excel. I think our MVPs were the, were the running backs. I think we picked Jalen Wright. And, and uh, man, he, he showed out, he showed why. And the running backs as a whole, you know, Jabari Small had some good runs there. Dylan Sampson obviously had the, had the four touchdowns. But I think Jalen Wright was, was a big, he kind of set the tone for them and, and helped carry them when the offense was sluggish out of the gate. They started picking up with some easy plays through the run game. Yeah, Jalen Wright asked about coming back to Nissan yeah. Stadium after that Music City Bowl moment. And he said it went through his mind before yeah. the game, that, that it was something that he thought about kind of net first time back since that moment. And he's definitely leaving the stadium a little bit happier yeah. now than he was on that December night. Also a guy though, like you said, pushing almost 10 yards per carry for Tennessee. Yeah. Didn't find the end zone. It was Dylan Sampson and Joe Milton who took the charge there. But it was a very effective night to yeah. say the least. But speaking of Joe Milton, let's talk a little bit of quarterbacks. Joe Milton, Nico Iamaliava, and Gaston Moore all seeing the field. Of course, Joe Milton taking the primary role of quarterback. Uh, Nico getting two drives, Gaston getting one where they just kind of dumped it off a hand, handful of times and went to the locker room. Let's talk about Joe Milton first. How would you grade what he did? Yeah, I mean, it may be a, a little bit. He had a lot of high expectations, and I think there were some plays early. The Ramel Keaton throw should have been a touchdown, at yeah. least a huge gainer. What we would have seen from Joe Milton last year in that Clemson game and in that Vanderbilt game, what you kind of would have expected him to do. 
wasn't really on him. That, that ball was on the money, a, a rare drop from Ramel Keaton. But then they come down, he hit some big plays. It was another one he threw a little bit high as well to Ramel yes, Keaton again. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was a little bit of a sluggish start for him in the offense as a whole. Some of it on him, some of it on the receivers. But I think overall, just kind of maybe the first game you want to see, you know, out of him for, for an opener. An opener you were expected to win against an opponent. You know, you're going to face better defenses this year. But I think overall, a good day. Had no turnovers, yeah. which is always big. Always He's deal. kept that streak alive, which yeah. is really, really huge. Hopefully that extends. These Tennessee quarterbacks under Heupel do not throw a lot of picks. So mm-hmm. um, so no turnovers. That's always a plus. And, and I think overall a pretty good grade. Pretty good grade for him. And they, like you said, they settled in with some easy stuff in that second half, and it worked the rest of the way. Yeah, I, I thought a very similar thing about Joe Milton, where there was clearly stuff he could work on. Yeah. He missed on a couple throws. You, you mentioned the one to Ramel Keaton. That was high. I believe it was on a pivotal third down. Yeah. Would have moved the chains, a throw that you would want him to make. Uh, some other plays where you would have liked to see a little bit more of Joe Milton but overall, I, I thought he had a really good game. I, I thought he did well. Like you said, first game, shaking off the rust. You'll have Austin P to kind of continue to, to work on what you need to and get right before you head to the swamp for a massive game where you can't really yeah. come out slow like Tennessee did today. If this was week 10, I would be concerned. Week one, yeah. not going to overreact. I think he did a solid job. Some of the offensive woes were on him. Some of them uh, you have to look elsewhere. But I'd say overall, pretty good job. And then, as I said earlier, we got to see Nico a little bit too, which, yeah. which I was really excited to see how he would do. You heard the crowd here start to chant Nico when, yeah. when he was on the field. Pretty cool moment. And I thought he looked good as well. Uh, great pocket presence was, was yeah. really my biggest takeaway from him. Maybe the tackles collapse, uh, obviously not working with the starting offensive line. So, so doesn't have the protection Joe Milton necessarily had. Was able to move around the pocket pretty freely. Uh, avoid getting sacked, either dump off the ball or ran for a first, ta- uh, first down at one point. Biggest play to me was when he stepped up in the pocket, found I believe it was Caleb Webb in the end zone, throw sailed on him a little bit, yeah. couldn't connect on it, but it, it was that close to a big highlight play from Nico in his first real game at Tennessee. So true freshman, like I said, first time playing college football. I was really pleased with what Nico looked like as well. Not there, There's no con- uh, QB controversy here or anything, yeah. but yeah. kind of setting himself up for a good career right. going forward. Final thing I want to talk about special teams yeah. there were some woes jackson ross the punter you, you heard josh heupel talk about it a little bit didn't expect those issues but understands kind of the difference and what he had to adjust to jackson ross didn't have a great game punting the ball kickoff duties josh turbyville your backup kicker and punter doing the kickoffs kicked out of bounds a few times another yeah. thing you can't do another thing that's gonna give opposing teams good field position and even D. Williams had a, I would think we would all agree he had a really strong game, yeah. but did fumble the ball once. Yeah. So, kind of, what what did you see from special teams? What would you like to see tightened up and just kind of your overall thoughts on it? I think it's punting it is a big one. You know, that, that's obviously a huge deal in any game. And, you know, I, I think Josh Heupel seemed very calm about that in, in mm-hmm. post game. He said, you know, what you saw later in that game is what we've seen out of Jackson Ross in fall camp. And, you know, again, he also pointed out he's a guy that's played Australian rules football. Yeah. First time playing in an, an actual college football game. And maybe maybe what you'd expect to see. And the coaching staff, I think, with Josh Heupel, his demeanor, maybe they expected that as well. But obviously something punting you want to clean up. I was really impressed, though, with, with what Josh Heupel had to say about D. Williams. He talked mm-hmm. about his maturity. We were kind of – you know, we've talked about it. We, we were impressed with what he said a few weeks ago. A guy with that scale, skill, that talent – it's hard not to get haul a ball in and, and you know take off when you're as good as he is when you can break yeah. in at any time. He's a guy we saw make decisions today that were smart, you know, and, and you know, outside of the fumble, but he would you know fair catch it, you know, when he had to, and, and make, just make smart decisions. And the uh, coach Ibel talked about his just maturity and handling that fumble, how he came back out, had a big run here uh, in the second half that set up a, a touchdown. So there was, like you said, some positives there, and obviously some things that will have to be cleaned up by the time you get to Gainesville. I mean, opening kickoff for D. Williams yeah. has a really good return. Next time he sees that punt, the, the entire crowd, you could tell, was like, return it, return yeah, it. We yeah. want to see it again. <laughs> he's, he's super mature. Yeah. You're right, and though. Call, call he, fair catch. Even on the fumble there was a good return. It, it was yeah, right it, across the It was just kind of a, a just, situation where right. maybe the ball security should have been better with, with guys flying right. at you. But. And you saw that last year, which bodes well, out of that 11-2 and two team. Guys like Princeton Fant, um, guys like you know Trayvon Flowers who in that pit game, you know, Made a special teams mistake, yep. comes out, 
makes the game-winning play with the sack on, on defense, yep. but it, I think it speaks to the coaching staff giving these guys second opportunities. It's impressive how they take, take advantage of it. Yeah, I, it, it was a rough showing for Jackson Ross in his debut, but but I do expect him to look more like we saw at the end of the game, which wasn't perfect still, yeah. but but definitely improved in something that Tennessee can, can live with and, and work with. I expect to see more of that Jackson Ross as we go yeah. forward, which is also what Heupel had to say, where, where that, that end of the game looked more like the Jackson Ross they knew than the one that was – Hit, kicking 17-yard punts and, and kind of giving yeah. the other team good field position. But next time you see us, it'll be next week as we return to Knoxville. We'll have all the coverage leading up to the Austin P game, and then, of course, we'll have boots on the ground in Neyland Stadium, the 2023 Neyland Stadium debut against Austin P. already a sellout. Yeah. And you'll for Austin P. Tennessee fan base is ready to return and watch their football team. We saw it here. This place was, good, was really clad in crowd. orange. Yeah. Phenomenal crowd. Expect an even better one, 100,000 plus yeah. fans at home. But thank you for watching. Make sure you head over to VolReport.com for all of our written content. We have game story, takeaways, well, feature stories on the way as well. Everything you need from game day and for the rest of the season over at VolReport.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and links to everything on the description. Thank you for watching.